Hoffman is John Bowens. And in this segment, we're going to talk about the SECURE Act and how it has impacted inherited IRAs. We created this video training specifically for equity trust clients that have a traditional IRA with cash and or assets. And eventually, when they pass away and leave that traditional IRA to their beneficiaries, they're going to want to be made aware of what happens if they leave it to a non-spousal beneficiary because the rules changed January 1 of 2020 under this SECURE Act. So what does the SECURE Act stand for? The Setting Every Community Up for Retirement Enhancement Act. It was passed in December of 2019. It went into effect January 1 of 2020. There are a variety of components to the SECURE Act to discuss, but in today's program, we're gonna stay focused specifically on how it has impacted the inherited IRA. More specifically, how it has impacted what happens when you leave your traditional IRA or even Roth IRA or other retirement plan to a non-spousal beneficiary. See, it's different when you leave an IRA to a spouse compared to a non-spouse like children or grandchildren. So let's talk about how the process worked prior to January 1 of 2020, prior to the SECURE Act. So prior to the SECURE Act, when you would pass away and leave your IRA to your spouse, your spouse could take that account in most cases as what is known as a treat as own. So they consume the IRA, if you will. They take the IRA, it gets rolled into their existing IRA or they open up a new IRA and roll the assets and cash over into that account. And it's in their name. So it's not an inherited IRA. It's an IRA in their name, almost as if it was their IRA from the beginning of time. Now, you'll learn that under the SECURE Act, the spousal rules really didn't change. So even post January 1 of 2020, when you pass away, you can leave your IRA to your spouse and your spouse can take that account as what is known as a treat as own. Prior to the SECURE Act, if you left your IRA to a non-spouse, so think children or grandchildren, those children or grandchildren would have to take money out every single year known as a required minimum distribution. And the amount that they would have to take out would be based on their life expectancy. So they would go to the IRS published life expectancy table. They would perform the calculation and determine how much money they have to take out every single year. But they could take it out over their lifespan. This is also known, you'll hear of it referred to in the industry as a stretch IRA or stretching the IRA because you're stretching it out over the lifespan of that beneficiary. The SECURE Act changed the rules for non-spousal beneficiaries. Under the SECURE Act, the beneficiary, non-spousal beneficiary that is, has to take all of the assets and all of the cash out within 10 years. Now, they don't have to take a requirement of distribution within that 10-year period, but they have to take the entire account, the entire contents, all the cash out of the account and assets out of the account within 10 years. Now, for equity trust self-directed clients, most have alternative assets in their IRAs like mortgage notes, trust deeds, real estate, private placement investments. And so in this respect, you'll want to look at what that will look like for your non-spousal beneficiaries if they have to take all the money out within 10 years. Now, you will learn there is one exception to that 10-year rule, and it's really not an exception, but more or less just a delay for minors that inherit the IRA. So individuals under, for most states, 18 years of age, that 10-year clock doesn't start until 18. So let's say you left it to your 10-year-old son or grandson or granddaughter or daughter. That 10-year-old, once they got to 18, then the 10-year clock would kick in. So in that example, they would actually be able to have the account for 18 years. So keep in mind that during that 10-year period, they can continue to invest the account all tax deferred or tax free. We'll get into the Roth IRA in just a moment. If it's a traditional IRA, it's gonna grow tax deferred. If it's a Roth IRA, it's gonna grow tax free. But they can continue to invest within that 10 year period. Now, keep in mind that when you distribute money from a traditional IRA, you have to pay taxes. So for example, if you have a $1 million 
traditional IRA and you take a $100,000 distribution, that $100,000 is added to your 1040 as ordinary income and then you pay taxes. So if you're at a 20% tax rate, you would pay $20,000 in taxes to take that $100,000 distribution from the traditional IRA. It's going to work the same for your beneficiaries. So if you leave it to a spouse, they're going to, of course, have to take distributions because it's their account. If you leave it to your non-spousal beneficiaries, children or grandchildren, the same process. They will have to distribute money from the account and pay taxes. So think about that 10-year rule. That's important to think about because if you left a rather large traditional IRA to your child or grandchild, think $1 million. If they took a $1 million distribution at 10 years, so let's assume that they didn't take any money out within the 10 years and they took a $1 million distribution at 10 years, that'd be a $1 million addition to their ordinary income, and then they would have to pay taxes accordingly. So all in, being at the highest tax bracket, let's just assume a all in effective tax rate of 35%, that's $350,000 in taxes. And it could potentially be more based on their tax situation. So what some people would do is spread out that tax burden over the 10 years. So they would take out you know, maybe $100,000 out every year over the 10 year period. But as you can start to see here, when you leave a traditional IRA to a non-spousal beneficiary, they're going to have to be strategic from a tax perspective on how they distribute that cash and the assets that are, that are in the account. Now, for many equity trust self-directed investors, they have tangible assets, hard assets, uh, illiquid assets you can even refer to as like properties and trust deeds and private placement investments, private company investments. So you'll want to make sure that you put your heirs in a good situation so that they can withdraw money and optimize their tax situation. Now, that leads us to the solution. So you're probably thinking, well, wait a second, how do I completely relieve my children or grandchildren from this burden of taxation? Well, what you can consider is a conversion from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA while you're still living. Now, you got to do this while you're still living, because remember, you can only pay the tax while you're still living. So you'd have to convert now from the traditional to the Roth, get the tax burden out of the way. Your growth is going to be tax-free on that Roth IRA. When you leave it to your children or grandchildren, the growth is tax-free. And then when they withdraw the money, they pay 0% tax. See, the benefit of a Roth IRA is you pay the taxes on the seed rather than on the crop, opposed to a traditional IRA where you get deductions for contributions, it grows tax deferred. And then when you take money out, you have to pay taxes at that point in time. So let's use my example of a $1 million traditional IRA. Let's say we convert that $1 million traditional IRA to the Roth. We're going to have to pay taxes at that time. So that $1 million would be added to our 1040 as ordinary income. Let's use a 35% effective tax rate again. That's a $350,000 tax bill. You'll notice here, we're not withholding money from the account. We're actually paying for the taxes out of pocket. You could withhold money from the account, but most folks don't do that. They pay for that tax burden out of pocket so that they don't have to devalue the IRA. So now we move the $1 million to the Roth IRA. We got our taxes out of the way. All of our growth is tax-free going forward. And then when we pass away, let's say we leave that to a child or even a grandchild. That grandchild now has a $1 million Roth IRA. They have no tax burden. The IRA, you'll also learn, avoids probate as long as it's set up properly. So you don't have to worry about the assets in the IRA or the cash being tied up in a probate process. So it's left to the child or grandchild. It's tax-free to them. They can continue to grow it tax-free for the 10 years. They don't have to worry about taking money out incrementally like we showed you with the traditional IRA to optimize their tax situation. They can continue to grow the account tax-free to their best ability, make as much money as possible in that account. And then at 10 years, they'd have to distribute all of the cash and all of the assets in the account. So if they had properties and notes and mortgages, private companies, they would distribute all of those assets and all that cash from the account. So as you can start to see here, the Roth IRA could potentially be a beneficial solution for you to optimize your tax situation and the tax situation of your beneficiaries. We here at Equity Trust 
would encourage you to talk to your CPA. We're not tax advisors. We don't give tax legal or financial advice. We're a directed custodian. So I would encourage you to actually share this video with your CPA, sit down with them and talk about how to optimize your estate planning situation. Or maybe that's your estate planner that you want to talk to about this. Okay, so we talked about a full conversion just a moment ago. You could also do what is known as partial conversions. So maybe you convert uh, 100,000 in year one, 100,000 in year two, 100,000 in year three, so on and so forth to spread out your tax burden. So you, you could convert all at once or you can convert multiple times uh, throughout multiple years to spread out your tax burden. You can also convert assets. So if you have properties, you have notes, uh, trust deeds, you have businesses, uh, companies, private stock, uh, gold and silver maybe you have in the account, you can actually convert those assets at their fair market valuation into the Roth IRA. So you would get a fair market valuation on the assets, you'd submit that to equity trust, we would convert the assets, we would send a report to the IRS, which is known as a 1099 or a 5498, and, and then you would pay the taxes accordingly when you file your tax return. So again, you can check with your CPA on specifically what would my tax burden look like or sharpen the pencil and do that calculation on your own. All right, last but not least, and I know that some folks have questions on re required minimum distributions. So what are required minimum distributions? What required minimum distributions are is once you get to a certain age, you have to take money out every single year. And it's based on your life expectancy. I mentioned that before when a non-spouse prior to 2020, when a non-spouse would inherit an IRA, they could take the money out over their lifespan and they would perform a calculation based on their life expectancy rate. And this is a table that is published by the IRS. So what requirement and distributions are is with traditional IRAs, only with tax deferred accounts, by the way, Roth IRAs, you'll learn, don't have requirement of distributions, which is another attractive benefit to the Roth IRA in your lifetime, and of course, for your children and grandchildren. So with a requirement of distribution under these tax deferred accounts, you got to take money out every single year. Now, when does this start? Well, prior to January 1, 2020, prior to the SECURE Act, that age was 70 and a half. So with a traditional IRA, or SEP IRA, or other tax deferred account at 70 and a half, you have to start taking money out of the account every year. The SECURE Act, when that went into effect, that moved that age to 72. So now it's 72 with a traditional IRA, you have to start taking money out at 72 based on your life expectancy. So you would go to the IRS published life expectancy table and you would perform the calculation. Now I can tell you just doing the quick math, um, shorthand version here, it's about 4%. So at 72 years old, you have to distribute about 4% of your portfolio. I say that because some investors get a little intimidated by investing in real estate or other alternatives when they're getting close to that age of 72. As long as you have enough cash flow or you have IRAs elsewhere, you'll be able to satisfy your requirement of distributions. Under a Roth IRA, again, there are no RMDs. And then under the SECURE Act, when you leave your IRAs to a child or grandchild, they don't have to worry about RMDs, but they have to take all that money out again within 10 years. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this training video. I hope you got a lot out of it. If you're somebody that is interested in setting up a self-directed Roth IRA, what you're going to want to do is follow the instructions on this video, and we can have one of our associates reach out to you and help you establish your Roth IRA and begin converting cash and assets over into that Roth account. As we said before, I would encourage you to check with your CPA prior to doing that and then connect with Equity Trust so we can help you establish the Roth IRA and perform that conversion. All right, in recap, we talked about the SECURE Act, how it impacted IRAs, inherited IRAs. We talked about the difference between spousal inheritance versus non-spousal inheritance. We talked about requirement of distributions. And then, of course, we presented the solution of converting 
from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. And remember, you don't have to convert your entire account. You can convert that in chunks or, as we talked about, in stages over multiple years. I hope you enjoyed this training video. Until the next program, keep leveraging compounding interest in the absence of taxation.